Hey everyone. So today is day 13 of my transformation vlog. And I saw some posts on the EOL community that got me to thinking about my calling and why I'm called to do what I do, what I'm doing. And I think back to when I was growing up. And, you know, just to give you a little background, um, I grew up uh, with a single mother, um, no siblings. Um, and we grew up in an upper middle class neighborhood. Um, my mother did worked in IT, she did sales, she busted her hump, but she made great money at the time for a single black woman in an IT field where there were very, very few black women, very few black people at all. <clears throat> and I look back at some of the things that came out of that, some of the decisions that were made, um, some of the choices that were made um, all while I was growing up, and many of them I just didn't understand. Uh, many of them made very little sense to me. Um, you know, I didn't want to be, you know, one of very few black people in a very wealthy white neighborhood. Um, I didn't want to do this, I didn't want to do that, and I felt disconnected. But what I didn't know, what I couldn't have known at that time, um, was exactly what the advantages that my mother provided, the advantages that she busted her butt for, um, the advantages that she made possible would do for me later in life. Um, you know, I've been fairly successful in a professional world. I'm not hurting for much. Um, and I've also had been treated to a very good education. Um, you know, I had to take out tons of loans um, to get through it, but I had the opportunity at an education that most of the world um, would dream of, and Lord only knows what they would do to get it. And I think about what are the things that what are the things that most kind of turned the corner for me and gave me the opportunities that I had. And one of which is what you probably see behind me, bookshelves full of books. Uh, it's one thing we always had in our house. There has never ever been a lack of books in my life. Uh, my mother was a very avid reader, a uh, very strong proponent of if you want to find something out, get a book and go learn it. Um, we used to go to the library regularly. Uh, the neighborhood where I grew up, we had a bookmobile where the library would bring books to you. Um, and I would get books from that regularly. Um, she was also involved in IT, so I was involved in computers a lot sooner than most people were. And so between the understanding of all the things I could get from books, um, all the things that I could get from computers, which were fairly limited at the time, um, I really did have a leg up. I, I didn't see it as that. I didn't understand it to be the leg up that it was, but it really was a leg up. I mean, I, that by itself probably changed the course of my life. And when I think through that, I go, well, how is that possible? Well, and the reason that was possible was because we weren't in just survival mode. You know, there were time, there were difficult times to be sure, but we were never in just survival mode. There was always the option of, well, what's the next thing that we can do to learn, to enhance our lives, to transform ourselves, to open ourselves up to different cultures and different experiences, uh, to travel. Blessedly, I've got family all over the country. So even before I was an adult, I had been well-traveled um, in seeing different parts of the country. And I think about what made that possible. And what made that possible was the fact that my mother, working by herself, um, was able to provide an income to where we weren't stuck in survival mode. That we could spend time 
talking about things, talking about what was on the Cosby show, talking about what book I wrote uh, or read, talking about what we were doing on the computer, talking about things that were going on in the world. You know, she was, she was a very busy woman, but for all of her busyness, she had the ability to make time for me because she was working one job, not three. Um, she had the ability to make time for me because she could drive us anywhere that we needed to go rather than, you know, we had to wait on bus schedules that determined what our availability was. Um, and it's that opportunity that so many people don't have, even in this country, which is kind of ridiculous for as rich as we are. Just so many people don't have those opportunities. Um, and I'm starting to fully understand what those opportunities meant for me. And what I want to do is give other people, give other families the opportunity to do the same. And to some degree, it'll save those who I teach, who you know get to that next level of employment or income. Um, but it's mostly gonna have its effect on their children. Um, who can grow up like I did in an in a in a uh, experience where it's not strictly about well I got to figure out how to get food on the table I got to figure out how to get from you know point A to point B I got to figure out just how we're gonna manage to keep clothes on our back and a roof over our head and hopefully the lights still work in the morning um, and it's it's sad that that's the state of affairs but it. <laughs> It's funny. I was listening to a uh, Christian gospel song um, that was talking about why do we deal with, you know, I, I was looking at the world and I see children in poverty and people in slavery and the thought of it disgusted me. And so I shook my fist to heaven and said, God, why don't you do something? And the response is, he said, I did. I created you. Well, I'm coming to realize that I was created to right some of the wrongs that I'm seeing, to give people the opportunities that I had, um, and to give them even more opportunities to see the fullness of themselves, not just economically, but what that opens up in terms of the rest of their lives. Um, what opportunities that gives them for their families, for their children, for their grandchildren, um, and changing the trajectory of their lives. And not just um, Americans, you know, we've got enough advantages already, but to the rest of the world as well, because the same principles apply the universe around. And so my calling, my goal, my uh, anointing, um, is to pass along or pass ahead the blessings that uh, I've been given uh, to give people the tools and the opportunities to do the things that my family has done, that I've done, um, and help them have that experience. Now, they still have the choice. People always have the choice of whether, we're, whether or not they're willing to do the work. Um, you know, people going through an awakening process, you don't do the work, you're just going to continue to catch hell. But if you do the work, you'll progress. You will see that transformation happen in your life, like I'm seeing it, like many of you are seeing it. And what I want to do is help facilitate that transformation in others. Um, still working through how that will work, um, what the particulars of that are, but I think the thing that is finally sinking home with me and you know, it's it's funny to think of because I was just watching um, uh, Simon Sinek's uh, TED Talk, which if you haven't uh, seen it, I definitely recommend it. Uh, talking about starting with why, and I think I now have a fuller understanding or a clearer vision of my why, um, what it is that I want to bring to the world um, in as large a sense as I can. Um, I don't know how large that is, but I know I'm not going to put limits on it. Um, I want this to pass forward to as many people, as many families as possible, and see if we can get out of this scarcity model that causes fear and hate and division and strife 
to where people become satisfied with their lives enough that they're willing to love and live and let live. Um, because that's the place where I'm coming from and I'd like for others to come from there too. Um, so while I normally say I don't have the answers, I think in this case I do have an answer. Uh, I do still have plenty more questions, so I'm looking to see what the universe brings to me. But um, as everything, you know, have a great day and God bless.